week's episode of Wizards of Waverly Pod is brought to you by pros. Skeptical about custom beauty? I get it. I am too. My feed is flooded with customized this and personalized that, all promising the moon about curing my acne and my dry frizzy hair. But when pros says custom, they actually mean custom to you and your knees, not a one size fits all masquerading as custom. Pros is so confident that you'll love your results that they're offering my listeners an exclusive trial offer so you can see the difference custom care can make. 50% off your first subscription order at pros.com slash wizards. That's pros.com slash wizards for your free consultation and 50% off your one of a kind formulas. Pros.com slash wizards. You know what, Jen Stone? I love watching and listening to Wizards of Waverly Pod. Where can I do that more? So what you should really do if you want to get it every week and never miss an episode is follow on Apple or Spotify podcast, really anywhere you get your podcast, David DeLuise. You know what's fun? I've always watched us, yeah. but I listened to a pod for the first time on Spotify. How, was our, how happy- was our audio? It was good. Because <laughs> we talk over each other a lot. <laughs> but if you want more of us talking over each other and yes. talking about wizards. Follow us and then that'll make things happen more and then you'll get more. All right. I hope you guys enjoy this week's episode. Welcome to <laughs> Wizards of Waverly Pond. Well, uh, on this special episode yes. of Wizards of Waverly Pond. We have Pond, an amazing guest. Amazing guest. We have our one and only Gigi Hollingsworth, our resident mean girl, which really, by the way, we never really had another. Gigi was our one and only mean girl. Really, right, right. Because no one could compare. Um, Skylar Samuels, welcome hey! to Wizards of Waverly Pond. Thank Woo! you for being here. Oh, thank you, guys. I'm so happy to see both of your faces. It's been a long time. I know. It's been, what 16? were we saying, 16, 17 years, something like that? 17 years. Oh, my wow. God. I think we weren't even 17 when we met. How old were you when you did the show? I was, I think, freshly minted 13. 13? Oh yeah. Gosh. Like Christine and I were 14. An actual baby. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We weren't even 17 years old when we did this show. And Skylar, you knew at 13 how to be like a real yeah. mean girl. You know what I mean? Like a, a, you were, and by the way, the crazy 10 minute sale was pretty much our pilot. That yeah. was, the, there was the first episode that aired. And that's also great. you had shot it a year prior. I mean, we, we shot yeah. all the first season um, before it aired. So, so we shot like, I don't know, six or seven months, whatever it was. Yeah. And then it aired. So you had a little break in between there, right? Oh, wow. Then in that case, I may have been 12 in that crazy 10 minute bell episode, which is truly insane. Which also too, case. like you were so sophisticated at 12. Like it blows my mind that you were a year or two years younger than Selena and me because you look so like put together and yeah. like poised and we did not. <laughs> so I, I love to get right to it. When you, do you remember the audition? Do you, you did not know well, okay. about Wizards. Can oh. I take us back just a Taking little bit? Take us back. How did Rewind. you get into acting, Oh, Skylar? yeah, 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 yeah. Let's start there. I started when I was pretty little, not as young as Selena, but I was about six or seven when I started. Yeah, that's how old um, I was when I started I, too. Yeah, so I started at that age, but my first like real job like, you know, legitimate acting job was playing a mean, crazy child star on Drake and Josh. And that seemed to go over really well. Yeah. And then I sort of accidentally like ended up doing this shtick where I just played like a really mean girl on like a myriad of different shows for like four years. So it was like Drake and Josh kicked that off. And then it was in some order, maybe the sweet life of Zach and Cody mm-hmm. and then that's a Raven and then wizards. And I don't know why, but for some reason I just was always the, Crazy mean chick. That was my thing from like seven to twelve years old. Yeah. I know why. Because you did it really you well. Did it really you, well. You you had honed in on that. Uh, I don't know how or where you were able to zone in on that that mean girl thing because you you did it really well, or else you wouldn't have been on all those. TV shows, well, and you I know? feel like it's also like the smart person playing dumb. You know what I mean? Like so many of people that I know that got pigeonholed as playing like the dumb character were like Mensa. They were like really intelligent, like hyper intelligent people. Yeah. And I feel like it's the same for you because you're the nicest person, and so to play like such like a horrible character. I mean, we were talking about like the Tea Party episode, which we'll get there. We'll get there of just how you're like the loser crown and all that stuff. Like that's mean shit, you know. So, but and like I said, you were all you, you've always been so kind and. Sweet. Sweet. So it's just so funny that like that was your pigeonhole. Yeah. What was your favorite before Wizards? Because obviously it's a Wizards rewatch podcast, so I don't want you to be biased. But 
from That's a Raven, Sweet Life, Drake and Josh, which one was your favorite one to shoot and why, if you can remember? I think my favorite one to shoot was Wizards. I mean, I had fun on all we'll those shows. Later. I definitely <laughs> had a lot of fun doing set school with um, with Dylan and Cole. They were hysterical yeah. when I did Sweet Life. To like go to a day of school with them was wild. They were such like little class clowns and it was just like the three of us. So it was pretty funny, but doing wizards was really exciting because I really loved Fred Savage and he directed crazy 10 minute sale. So I was like, so excited to meet him because he was like a childhood hero. And it was just a fun energy on that set. Like you guys were all so nice and so welcoming. Like, I just remember, I feel like that episode. Yeah. That was the first one that I did. Like Selena invited me to have lunch with you guys and she brought in like in and out burger and was like asking me questions, trying to get to know me. And I just was like, these people are so nice. It was just so warm and welcoming. And it was fun that I got to do a few episodes because I always loved that group of people. Did you know that your character was named after one of our writers? I didn't know that. But today it's funny. I was doing some research to jog my own memory and I kept seeing Gigi, the writer, and I thought, oh, no, was that who that was based on? <laughs> yeah. Well, not as a character, because Gigi McCreary, who is our writer, is also lovely. But right. that was kind of their, like, our writers love to do inside jokes of, like, putting their own names, whether it was in shops on, like, Waverly Place or whether it was on, you know, Spells or or is your character. And Gigi mentioned when we had her on the show, she was like, yeah, they named me the, after the bitchy <laughs> character. What the fuck? Like they were so, she was like, what the hell guys? But it was sort of like a crack, like writer's room sort of joke between them. Um, So tell us, you were going to ask. Well, I just yeah, realized yeah. that you, even though uh, Wizards of Waverly Place wasn't like a thing or a show, but you were on Drake and Josh, Zach and Cody, and and uh, uh, that's a that's Raven. a Raven. Mm-hmm. So you already knew the 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 spiel and what it was, just that this wasn't out yet, right? So you 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 had already yeah. that feel. But I, what I love to hear, just as, as an actor, is what was your audition process like? Oh gosh, it's been so long. I mean, I think if I remember it correctly, they always held them at Hollywood Center Studios, Mm -hmm. right? Like it was always on the lot. And I think when I auditioned for that So Raven and Sweet Life and Wizards, it was like old school where you had your first read and then they kept you and you waited and then you would like read again for the writers, you know, like same day usually. And then like within a day or two, you knew if you got the job, like it was always very exciting. Um, like a real time competition kind of, I just, I remember doing that a couple of times. Um, just like spending many, many hours on Las Palmas, like, you know, stage and, you know, going through that, but it was so fun. Cause I think that's what I loved about doing sitcom stuff as a kid was, it was like, you know, the energy of going on stage, there's like a live element. And even in the audition process, it's kind of like that, like just sort of the fun jitters that you get when you're like before an audience and you want to make them laugh, which I've always loved to do. So it was fun. It was fun all the way through. Like the audition process was fun. Filming was fun. The fact that this show is still on TV almost 20 years later is insane, but also fun. I mean, the whole thing has been just a highlight of my professional life. Did, because you played all the mean girls and stuff, did when and when people like recognize you when you're out, did were they like, you're so mean? Were they were they mean to you or or no one was mean to me in real life. I did get, oh, you're not mean in real life. Like, ah, they were right. surprised, which I was like, well, Obviously. yeah, that would be terrible if I were like GG in real life. That girl is the worst. <laughs> but I think what's so crazy is the fact that I'm almost 30 and I feel like I look pretty different than I did 17 years ago. And it is amazing that of all the stuff I've done in the last 20 years that I've been acting, this is the number one thing I get recognized for. It's like crazy to me. I'm like, how can you tell that I'm the same person? They're like, oh, you look the same, which the older I get, the more I take that as a compliment. But it's just so crazy to me that I'm like, that is the one thing that time and again, they're like, were you Gigi? I'm like, I'm like, Yes, but how do you, how can you tell? How did she I know? think you know I cuz I've thought the same thing. I'm like what is that that it just like sticks in someone's like brainstem or something it's so like visceral for people, which is such a blessing as a performer cuz you just love what you do and you want people to love it too. 
But it's like, I feel like what it is, is it's two things. I think this is my theory, at least for whatever it's worth. You can also shove it to the curb as well. <laughs> but it is the fact that it's at such a like a pivotal time for people because like they're growing up at that age. And then also Disney just re-ran the crap out of them. Yeah. So it was like repetition. It got like in people's brains. So I think that's part of it because yeah. I have the same thing where it's like people, no matter what you do, and we'll get to it, but you've done some amazing things beyond Wizards. But it's like, for some reason, it's just really stuck in people's brains, which is, like I said, is such a blessing. But well, I mean, now we have people watching it on Disney Plus and you have millions and millions yeah. and millions of people watching it. I mean, what is the subscription base to Disney Plus? You know, I mean, I don't know. it's a lot. There's a lot of people. We're not seeing watching any of that. that. It doesn't matter. No, I know there's no money there. But, you know, <laughs> um, I, I, I just want to say, like, th there's one thing that really stuck out, like your cronies, the two. Yeah, the, the two, wannabes. Yeah, they the were wannabes. so funny. <laughs> Because the but the thing that I always remember is when they got a nose job to look just and like you. the cheek you. implants that were yeah, well, the like. But well, the cheek implants were on the forehead that were going to fall down. Oh, my Lord. But when they when they did the nose job thing, you said something and they were like, <laughs> ow, ow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's right. I mean, thinking back on it now, I'm like, that was kind of edgy for like middle school or high schoolers, however old we were supposed to be, to have had like plastic facial yeah, stuff. Right. right? And even like wearing mini skirts and high heels, that was probably the first time I wore high heels was on that show. And I think there was those stairs at the school. Oh, mm -hmm. right? I hated the stairs. My fear. So I'm in shoes I've never worn before. It was like putting like a baby giraffe in stilts. Like I had no <laughs> idea how to walk in those shoes and then like trying to get up and down the stairs and like not wanting to fall in front of like a stage full of people. But now I'm like, well, all the kids who are 13 look like adults, so maybe Wizards was ahead of its time it's that interesting way, because but... This week's episode of Wizards of Waverly Pod is brought to you by Pros. Skeptical about custom beauty? I get it. I am too. My feed is flooded with customized this and personalized that, all promising the moon about curing my acne and my dry, frizzy hair. But when Pros says custom, they actually mean custom to you and your knees, not a one-size-fits-all masquerading as custom. With Pros, your formula can't exist without you. Pros gets personal, covering everything from your skin and hair concerns and how your diet, exercise, and stress levels affect you to get to the bottom of what's really impacting your hair and skin health. I really love beauty that helps from the inside out. They even asked me about my surroundings, which at first I thought was super weird, but then I remembered LA is a desert and there's smog and pollution and Pros really helps customize my hair and skincare to cater to those specific needs. Since I switched to using Pro's custom shampoo, conditioner, pre-shampoo scalp treatment, and their skin serum, and so many more great products, I've noticed that my hair is more moisturized, shinier, fuller, and less frizzy, and my skin, oh, it couldn't be clearer or brighter than ever before. But don't just take my word for it. And a third-party double-blind dermatologist supervised controlled clinical study, aka the golden standard in research studies, Pro's proves that personalization works better than off-the-shelf alternatives. Pros is so confident that you'll love your results that they're offering my listeners an exclusive trial offer so you can see the difference custom care can make. 50% off your first subscription order at pros.com slash wizards. That's pros.com slash wizards for your free consultation and 50% off your one-of-a-kind formulas. Pros.com slash wizards. I remember if I... Dude, those stairs were vicious, Yeah, man. but not just... I mean, the way that you walked in that... Now that you're saying you hadn't walked in heels before, I could see that you were very, I don't want to say malicious, but you were like, I'm walking now. Meticulous. Yeah, yeah meticulous yeah. with it. It was it's very interesting to to hear that. And I feel you too, because I, I was, one of the episodes we were rewatching, I had this like beginning thing where I run down and I have all these lines coming down the stairs and you can see me looking at my feet and I'm not wearing heels. So kudos to you. But I'm literally like looking at my feet being like, don't trip, don't trip as I'm trying to say this whole like barrage of lines. And the Disney energy being so quick and high and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that in heels, it's like the Ginger Rogers quote. You were doing it high energy, down the stairs and in heels. So yeah, that's the best training is like working on a Disney show because it's like doing this 24 seven, but right. like tenfold where it's so many different plates in the air and just to like stick the landing. It was the best learning to start there for sure. I feel like it's Disney, like kid shows and soaps. Well, I walked in heels really in the in the Wizards movie. I had to walk in heels, oh, that's but right, they were perfect. platform. But because uh, you know, like I think Marie and I were supposed to switch, and it was just the clothes or something. And I 
I like almost twisted my ankle. It's not easy. No. It's hard to walk in heels, you know? Well, like I said, Ginger Rogers backwards and in high heels, you yeah. know? Um, so what was your favorite episode to shoot? Because you did mostly through the first season and then a little bit in the second season with graphic novel. I think that was your only episode in the second season. But the what out of all the episodes you shot? I'd say it's a tie. I definitely remember the pilot was very exciting doing crazy 10 minute sale. Um, Cause like I said, I was like such a big Fred Savage fan and I just like really looked up to him and always wanted to direct when I was older. And I just thought it was so cool that he was doing that. And it was on that episode that I found out, like, I just was asking him like so many questions about his life. And he told me that he went to Stanford and that's how I decided that's where I wanted to go You're to college. Kidding. That's where that decision came from. I was like, okay, great. And I remember coming home from work and be like, mom, I got to go to Stanford. She was like, okay, first of all, you're 13. Second of all, like, <laughs> yeah. that's really hard to do. So like, maybe we should, you know, like keep that in mind. But you know, when the time came around five years later, I was like, nope, still want to go to Stanford. That's where I wanted to go. And um, Fred helped me with like my essays and application to college, like oh all God. because of Wizards, which is really wild that that came full circle. Um, but the episode I remember the most was, I think it was the tea party episode. Yeah. Cause yep. I get that cake in my face. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh God. I, oh my God. That girl, she threw it so hard. Mean. She was mean. Was maybe Kelsey tossed it maybe, but oh my God, I was sneezing chocolate for like two <laughs> weeks. Like it was so intense. Cause it was kind of like at an angle. So if you really do it just right, you can have frosting all the way in your sinuses. It's amazing. Yeah. I yeah. said that cause that we, I remember rewatched that. And I was like, Oh my God, Skylar, she, the, whoever was told to put it in your face was like, we're not doing this more than once. You get that all the way up her face and you put it in there. And she, <laughs> it was like, yeah. if I was the director, the, I would have been like, that looked like it hurt. It looked know? like it hurt me watching it. Yeah. So I- We um, were saying in that episode too, we were like, yes, of course, like the loser crown was so awful and stuff like that. But we were talking about, we were like, two wrongs don't make a right. Like, why are we like coming back? I mean, it's very Disney Channel to do like, like a pie in the face, cake in the face, whatever. Right. But like, we were like, that's so mean in return. We're supposed to be a butt like bigger than that. But no, two I, wrongs made a right in yeah, that episode. I wanted Harper to like not do that, to not put the crown on you. You know what I mean? I wanted her to be the bigger person yeah, yeah. and just be like, you know, we were let's freshmen not, in high school. I like, understand. Uh, I understand. Live and learn. Yeah. I'm now I'm like, oh my goodness, that cake went right in your face. And that was intense. And then I'm not sure if you 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 know, with your hands, you took out the the you know, yeah. so you could see, you know. And you had to, I mean, it takes a long time for the audience. You know, we're going to shoot a scene for, you know, it could take an hour or, or a little less, but yeah. you had to have that on your face the whole time because they didn't take it off. We only did that once, correct? Yes. I think they had one cake and just like the reset would have been impossible. So I feel like we shot up until that point a bunch. And then like once they had it, it was go time. And, you know, she threw that cake like she meant it, guys. Oh. It, and it well, landed. Least it was one. So I don't think they needed more than one day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your sinuses couldn't take another you did, day. You did such a good job. I can't believe you were 12 or 13. Yeah. That's just amazing. And by the way, kudos on going to Stanford. That is amazing that you, you got in and that you went there. And what a... What a wonderful thing. And what a wonderful thing to our audience to say, if you have a dream, you can make it a reality. Yeah. You know, if you put your energy into that, then it's, then it can happen. Well, and the fact you know? that you had the focus and perspective at 12, 13, and then like Fred, Hull, like, that's just so lovely. Yeah. Like that warms my heart that like, that was your experience. But you know, I, I, I love that. What did you major in at Stanford? If I hadn't done wizards, I probably, that, I don't know. I don't think I would have even thought of Stanford. It wasn't on yeah. my radar, but it sort of like planted this thing in my brain. Like once I became a teenager, that was like my, you know, albeit goal. And it's just like, if I had done this show, that may never have happened. So it's just pretty wild how the, all that played out. Um, but I ended up getting a major in their like liberal arts major, which is called like science, technology, and society. It was basically like yeah. you got to take a sampler platter of all that Stanford yeah. had to offer. And it was awesome. Cause I'm like, I'm here for four years. I got to max this out. So yeah. I got to take all different kinds of classes and different disciplines with different professors. And it was awesome. I had such a great time. So you put acting on hold. You're like, I'm going to go to school or did you still audition a little bit here or there? Or was that like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to school now. I'm not going to uh, um, move in. Cause I, when I was doing 
Third Rock from the Sun. He mentions uh, it almost Joey Gordon Levitt <laughs> was he they wrote him out because he wanted to go to college. Yeah. And and then I I saw him at Hugo's and I was like so he, he only went there for like a year or two years. Oh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt? Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, what what happened? He's like, everybody was just partying. Nobody was focusing on school. So he came back and he did like brick <laughs> or something. He's doing great. But did you stop? Did you put acting on hold during that time? So I've never pressed pause in either part of my life because I'm insane. I just like having a lot of things going on. So even when I did Wizards, and those other Disney shows, I was always in regular school full time. So I was never homeschooled. So I would like tell my teachers I was leaving for a week to go, you know, do these shows. And somehow I got away with it. But I was in school the whole time, you know, while working as a kid and a teenager. And when I was in college, I just did the same. I thought, well, I've done both so far. We'll see what happens. Um, like the movie that I did in college, I did Sharon one, two, three with our friend, Aaron. Yeah. Aaron and Hayes, then the so Duff, good. like I did my self tape for the Duff in my dorm room and had to like my dorm room, which was like the size of a shoebox, like took off my bed sheet, hung it up, had my roommate like read lines with me. You know, I just kept finding a way to make it work. And, yeah. um, now that I'm done with school, work seems so easy because now it's my only job that I have to focus on. Yeah. So it's much easier now. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. And I, 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 it's so cool that your teachers back in high school worked with you. That was one of the reasons I had to be homeschooled because I was going to school back in Texas when I was like auditioning as a kid. And they were like, what are you doing? I mean, it was Texas. So they were like, what are you doing? Why are you leaving six months out of the year? And so eventually they just stopped. They were like, you guys can't do this anymore. And so my mom was like, okay, we'll just homeschool you. So that's so nice that your high school teachers worked with you through that. Because it's so much better, I feel like, to go to that environment. And like, I missed the college experience, right? Because I, I mean, my 20s were a mess. I was in and out of hospitals. I was like doing a lot of stuff with just personal stuff. But I ended up going to college with like community college and then transferring to like a four year online because it was like during the pandemic. So I'm so I love I'm I love hearing these like classic like dorm room college experiences, trying all the different classes. I love that you got to have that not only high school, but college experience. Um, that was and, really and, the thing I wanted to do was college because I also, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles. So yeah. I think I had a slightly different like home field advantage, sure. like people worked in the business. Like that was normal. Like lots of people like Mark Sandrowski, yeah. I went to school with his daughter. Yeah. So it was so funny. Like one of the episodes he did, I was like, aren't you Mackenzie's dad? Like, what are you doing <laughs> yeah. here? Like it was, you know, such kind of a sort of odd thing to grow up there and be working there. So Stanford kind of reset like the classic sort of idealized version of college years in school yeah. and you know, I learned how to be a mean girl like Gigi from the girls I went to school with in real life. So, mm. you know, college was a nice change of pace. Understandable. You're, you're, you're such a well-rounded human being. I'm, I'm, She's always I'm, been this I'm way. not your parent, but I'm very proud of you. You, uh, you know, <laughs> your, your, your parents have done a very good job. I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's interesting, just kind of off that topic, but you know, when you had said it was a wonderful experience to audition in person and have the audience a part of the show, very much so. But now, like you said, in your dorm room, um, we, we, we put everything on tape now. We, we, we like don't see anybody. Yeah. So, I mean, if I'm doing an audition, I'll, you know, do it with my wife and she's reading the other lines, but it's, it's just me. I mean, I do get to do 20 takes, you know, so I'm happy with it. But it's interesting because we lose that energy from the room yeah. you know which that performers energy yeah you know exactly what now what was that you auditioned that. for from in the dorm room oh the dove for the duff duff yeah so i did that all oh, right i saw that college. movie but wait, what was the show you did a show a series for a little oh, while uh nine lives of uh chloe king right and i did the nine lives of chloe king while i was a junior in high school. Okay. And then I did um, the first season of Scream Queens while I was in college. And was Abigail Breslin on that with you? Is that? Scream? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. And, and and I just did a movie with her, the, the Italians. 
She is the coolest. I love her from Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah. And yeah. she, you know, Little Miss Sunshine, it just she stole my heart, you know. And then I did this movie with her. And she's like a truck driver, though. She's like, yeah. uh, Galloway's <laughs> right. Uh, what are you doing? Where are you going? I, oh, just, you know, I she's... just saw her actually at Jackie and, and um, Matt Linton. They have this like improv show called Pinot Noir, uh. where it's like a... I don't know if you've heard about it, Skylar. It's so much fun. Um, but they have like a guest star who's like the murder victim and it's like a film noir improv basically. And you drink a bottle of wine during the show. Um. But I just went to um, one of their performances for that. And um, Abigail was there and she was like, Putting a cigarette out, like, like. <laughs> I love her, Abigail. Like, I love uh, you. You're my favorite, and and <laughs> and it was so great to do a movie. I played Uncle Sal with a missing tooth. I was in tracksuits. It was like, hey, how you doing? You know, <laughs> it was so much fun. Because you went from being a reoccurring on Wizards to the lead, number one on the call sheet on Nine Lives of Chloe King on Freeform. I guess ABC Family at the time. But so, what yeah. did you? How did you? transition and what what changed for you going from being a reoccurring coming into a show versus leading your own show I was really lucky that I did a lot of reoccurring and guest starring stuff before that happened because I feel like I really got to learn good examples of what like number one leadership looked like and then also some bad examples of like don't want to do that and so you know I think like Selena was always a great example of someone who was like kind and inclusive and like easygoing and that like, she was definitely someone who I was like, okay, like she's a good leader. And, you know, I was lucky to work with a couple other people that I thought like, okay, like if you're number one, like this is how you want to do it. And it was a big transition. I think it was hardest because like I said, I was a junior in high school. So I just remember like having to do a lot of SAT prep while I shot that show, which was really crazy, was really burning the candle at both ends on that one. But It was fun. It was exciting and nerve wracking. But the one thing I did miss is, you know, it was a one hour drama. So you didn't have the same like energy of a comedy, which now I miss, especially like self-taping in the pandemic. Like you were saying, David, just like to be in a room of people performing. I do miss that very much. So that's the one thing I would love to get back to. Yeah. Single camera one hour is very different for people who don't know. It's It's long hours. Sometimes your call time is two in the morning and you're there and you know, it's it's shooting a lot of stuff. It's waiting around a lot. It's you being called in at 6 AM and not working till six at night. And you know, there, there really is no, it's just, it's like shooting a movie and it takes a long time. The fact that you led a show, which is a huge feat and to have the pressure, especially as a teenager of that sort of top down, like, is thing right where because it's like you set the tone you set the tone for the set and like what's acceptable and what's not acceptable so to take that on your shoulders as well as just the normal yeah. pressures of being a junior in high school kudos to you you're either crazy amazing Thank or you. everything in one i'm going with amazing and <laughs> i don't just, know crazy amazing yeah crazy that? amazing but just just you <laughs> saying that you were the lead of a show doing sat prep and going to school and doing all this stuff I'm exhausted just from the thought of that. Yeah, right? Listen, I was awake, I think, from like halfway through 2010 until like the end of 2012. Like, I think I was just awake the whole time. There was just so much going on. Definitely a mix of crazy. But thank you. That's very kind. Okay, going back to Jamie Lee Curtis, who I'm a huge fan of amazing yeah. what what um how was that? What was the experience like on working on that? She is a badass. I mean, just such an incredible force of nature as a person, let alone like a performer, like few people can let it rip like Jamie does. Like she is so, so freaking funny. And it was just amazing to watch her kind of show up and like command the room. But it was also kind of fun because I feel like when we did Scream Queens, she was just kind of coming back from having been out of the spotlight for a little while. And it was really fun because I was like, oh, my God, like Freaky Friday was like a seminal movie for me, like as a teenager. So I was very excited to, you know, like work with her. But she was the most thoughtful person. Like she would regularly leave um, like books in everyone's trailers with like inscriptions inside of what she thought you would like to read. Like, oh, I thought of you. I read this book. I think you would really like it. You know, and I, I adopted a dog while I did that show. And while I came in. I think I came into work like the first weekend after having the dog and there was an enormous basket full of like dog toys and, you know, dog food and instructions on like how to be a good pet parent. Like she just was the most thoughtful, loving person. And it's just 
always a wonderful person to run into when I've seen her over the years. And then she like killed it and won an Oscar. And I'm just like, I cried so hard when she won. I was like, this is so well deserved. She's like, yeah. she's just the best. Well, because you, yeah, I mean, you I always want to see, I feel like it's pretty consistent that the people like her that have longevity in this business, they're always the kindest, most thoughtful, lovely people. And then it's like the 15 minute people that are kind of assholes because yeah, it's new. Sometimes, it's like sometimes the people who've been around for a minute are well, buttheads sure. too. Well, they're cranky. But, yeah. but <laughs> they're I, cranky. I, I love that you slipped in as a, I'm, I'm, I'm going to school. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm the show. And then, and I just adopted a dog as well. You're like, let me just throw like, one more thing on there. Uh, you know, uh, I, it's just that? amazing. Crazy I'm so amazing. Impressed. And then, <laughs> that's that's nice to hear. It is nice to hear when you're you're a big fan of someone yeah. and that they they treat you well. Do do silly and you don't have to uh, answer this, but what do you remember what book she gave you? Was there a, a memorable book that she gave you? Or I mean, obviously, dog toys and treats and stuff is nice, <laughs> but I'm just curious. There was a book about it was like transporting something about Venus, like the painting. I think it okay. was like yeah, yeah. there's a book where they're like transporting. Venus somewhere to something. But then there was also, I want to say it was like a, she's a big photographer, you know, like as a hobby, like she's an amazing photographer, Jamie. And so there was, um, who's that incredible? Not, um, who's the old school female photographer whose name I'm blanking on. What was the kind of photographs they took? It was like black and white photographs. I want to say it was, yeah, like the woman who took pictures of like people in like the Great Depression and in the 30s, something like that. Oh, jeez. I don't know. I, don't know. Like a, I will fail that. But it was like a it was like a history of like women and photography yeah. in America. Just like really cool stuff that I just, you know, things I might not have come across yeah. otherwise. But it was just so thoughtful. Like she wrote a little note of why she thought you would like each book. And she did that for all of us on the show, which was amazing. Dorothy Lang? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Dylan. Dylan. Um, Dorothy yes. Lang. Okay. I, I don't know if I'm a big yeah, like we'll Diane Arbus fan. Who she did a lot of like sort of people on like the outskirts of society and black and white photos. Really like you know amazing photographer. But that's who. That's one of my favorite female photographers. So I'm always and I love black and white. So I'm definitely gonna go home and kind of go down the Dorothy Lang rabbit hole. So thank you. But if you I'm could have your way, that. like what? Would you one hour movie a TV show? So what 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 would uh, you want right now? Like and magic wand, make it happen. <laughs> I would say I just finally got to binge Poker Face, yes. and I loved it. So and funny. I thought that to me was like the best of both worlds because every episode was like a little movie, but also the way the whole thing was woven together was just so clever and fun and dark and weird, and it just like. It ticked every box where I was just like, yes. Yeah. I don't know what to call this. I don't know what genre this is. I don't even know how to describe it. But whatever it is, it's amazing. That kind of thing would be so fun to do. Like, I like a little murder, but a little camp. Well, it's, it's like a dark comedy film noir, what's you know. Her, what's her name? The Natasha Leone. Okay, oh, my so God. Natasha Leone. I love that show. Took me a second because it's the one where she has the same day over and over, but it's different, right? No, it's not the same no, day. No, that's no, Russian shit. No, no, no. The poker face is the guy that does um, the, oh, what are they called? But is she the red hair yes. that was yeah, on yeah, that yeah. show? Yeah, and she's it's, done a million things. Yeah, so my I was at a party one time and she was there. And she was really cool. I was not that cool, you know, but she was like, pretty cool. I'm talking and there's, there's this sushi place. She has the Abigail Breslin thing. Yeah, going on. but she's like, she's <laughs> like, there's this sushi place that's really good. And the, and I said, oh, where is it? And she's like, yeah, I can't tell you because, you know, everyone would then know where. And I was like, where's the sushi? I want to know where the cool people go. <laughs> she's such like a classic, but, like, but I, Alan New Yorker. I understand that now. Like, if there's a certain place that's really good, like, I get the idea of wanting to keep Keep that a little bit of a secret now, you know, of, yeah. of a place. But okay, so now I have to watch Poker Face because I watched the oh, other so show good. where it's so like so good. A, a, yeah, a, a, it's so well, good. Well, with with Jamie Lee Curtis too. The um, it's gonna bug me that I can't remember. It's with Daniel Craig, Jamie Lee Curtis, like Chris Evans. Oh, the, Knives Out. Knives Ryan Out. Johnson. Thank you. The Knives Out. It's yes. the guy who does the Knives Out. And I'm sorry, I don't remember his name right off the top of my head, but I'm terrible with names. Speaking of names, great movie. You. You did Scream Queens, you did Freak Show, which was one of my favorite seasons of American Horror Story because I love like the 20s, 30s, like circus 
thing. How was it working with Ryan Murphy? Yeah. And then which one was which one did you enjoy more or for different reasons? Working on American Horror Story was like just as scary making it as it was watching it. Why? Fair enough. Why? It's one of those things. What was this? What were you scared of? It was really like this. The level of accuracy for Freak Show in particular. It's like the sets, the costumes, and then the two actors I worked with the most were. Finn Whitrock mm. and John Carroll Lynch, both of whom are just like Amazing. two of the most brilliant people I've ever acted with. And they played like the creepy clowns. Like John didn't even speak at all. Mm-hmm. He didn't speak. And he was so scary, just like silent. And he would groan and he was in this like crazy clown costume. And Finn like did speak and like wanted to be like him. He was like the scary clown protege. <laughs> and they were just so convincing watching them act that I would sometimes like forget that it was fake like I was genuinely afraid I'm like wait hold on this is not real but like you know you just sometimes watch people and you're so captivated you kind of like forget where you are and what you're doing that was my experience with them it was like they're too good at this but I feel like that's one of those things where like you hear people say you're only as good as your scene partner because you when you allow yourself to like listen and respond to who you're with when you're with someone that talented they make the job easy yeah you know they make it so easy to just be in the moment with them because they're so heightened and and John Carroll Lynch as Twisty the Clown, oh my God, was terrifying. And 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 without really saying scary. anything, like it was amazing. So I'm so glad you got to like have that experience with, I mean, both those actors are incredible. Yeah. I, I I recently worked with Lindsay from, from Ned's. Mm-hmm. We yeah, did a movie Lindsay together Shaw. and I we were in the scene and I was like, I don't think I've been this present with someone or had someone this present. So yeah. what you had said about you're as good as your scene partner, she just brought my performance way through the roof yeah. because I was like, this is so, there's the connection that the, it just was, it was very, not, not that all the people I haven't acted with in the past, you know, there's good experiences, but it just really hit Well, she's me. such a present person, Lindsay, yeah. but sometimes it can go on the flip side, which I'm sure we've all had that experience. Where someone's, where like someone's crazy? so, no, 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 where someone's so bad that it's distracting. Uh, I'm not going to name names, but there was like this like movie that I did where the like the hot guy or the love interest, whatever, I'm supposed to be like in awe of him, what have you. And he was just so wooden that I remember like looking at him and just being like, <laughs> Like, just like it was, I, I would like mess up some takes because I was just so distracted at how bad it was. <laughs> That's where you so have like, to act it your goes, ass off. Yeah, and I did. I did. I, you know, tried to be attracted to him as much as possible, but mostly I just, I was confused. Yeah. Like, so yeah, I mean, it goes both ways on that. Um, so you've made the switch from LA to Atlanta. So what caused mm-hmm. you to make that switch? How are you, how's auditioning being an actor and also just being a human? in both of those places since you grew up in LA? You know, I came to Atlanta to do the Duff. That was the first time I worked here, which was in 2014. So now 10 years ago and had a really great experience doing that. And then I came back again in 2017 to do a show called The Gifted, which was like in the X-Men universe. And when I came to do that show, I was just like at that point, you know, I was like 23, like classic quarter life crisis where I just was like, LA is weird. And I don't know, it's all weird. I don't like it here. I gotta get out and shake it up. And, you know, when I came to do this show, it just like changed my entire life. I had such an amazing experience. The group of people were awesome. You know, I, it was like, you know, this show was like classic network superhero one hour show. Sure. But like literally every day at work was like summer camp. Like everyone got along so well. You know, every Friday after wrap, like the entire cast and crew would all go out to like a bar or like an arcade and hang out. And it was just like such a wonderful experience. And to have that outside of LA, I think I discovered like, oh, like here you like go to work and then you leave and like you leave work at work. And it was such a refreshing experience that I was like, okay, I can get on board with this. Um, and it was during that time that I met my now husband. So, um, and he's from Georgia. So I live here now with him and, you know, it's just kind of crazy how like one job or one choice can like end up completely dictating the course of your life. You're very much following the universe's suggestions. You know what I mean? Like how you said wizards led to this, uh, uh, that, that superhero show led to your husband. And so were, were you guys doing long distance? First, like three years that we had known each other, 
he was like really shy and I couldn't get a read. I was like, this guy doesn't like me at all. I don't know what his deal is. And then we reconnected again in 2021. And I was like, I'm going to try this one more time because I really want to go on a date with this guy. And I'm going to convince him. Like, I know he's shy, but like I can win him over. And uh, lo and behold, three years later, I got my date. And after that, it was, you know, how did did you win him over? Yeah. How did, what was your, what was your, how did, did you go, we're dating now. Oh, we're going on a date now. Yeah, what her did voice you do? got that low. Yeah. Is what we're oh, no, you became yeah. my brother. Peter. That's how my brother Peter talks. Did you just say, hey, we're going on a date? What, how did that? How did you make that happen? Well, I think I was just a little bit braver because I too was kind of shy and had absolutely zero social skills. Like Jen, you were saying, like people in our generation are like so advanced in some ways and then like so behind in others. Yeah. I had like zero skill when it came to like dating boys like I didn't understand how to do it I girl was like, you I didn't have any time to it. date and and like <laughs> no, boys I'm very I'm Lord. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I had no practice so in my mid-20s I was like I really got to figure this out because like I don't know how to do it everyone else makes it look so easy oh, but um you know the fact that we were like friends and kind of knew each other for a few years before and then we didn't see each other for a couple of years so when I saw him again I was like okay we're not chickening out this time like we're gonna be brave and I'm glad I was, you know, it was a good lesson and just like, don't be afraid to be rejected. Cause like most likely the other person wants to hang out, you know, yeah. they're just shy too. So like, get over yourself, be brave. Yeah. Yes, it did. And I'm, you're clearly you're <laughs> glowing. So you're very happy. Congratulations. And if, and if, even Thank if you. it doesn't work out, taking a risk, you know, you learn from it. You know, you, you, you I think it's a well, really the worst nice thing. Somebody can say is no, it's like, yeah, rejection sucks. But well, no, I mean, no, no, the worst somebody can say is no response. No, the, oh my God, don't get me started. <laughs> don't get me started. I just had this conversation about how I was like, look, it's disrespectful. It's unkind. Like you need to just respond in a reasonable amount of time. Right. But I mean, our generation, uh, we're all over the place on social skills. and Like social media stunting all of us and the internet stunting all of us. So we're all just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Well, it it is. It's nice that you're, I'm, I'm married and happy and my my wife, Yulia, and my dog, Tony, I couldn't be happier in my life. So it's nice that, that you have found someone that you're happy with. I'm, yeah. I'm happy I'm for you. I'm single and I have you. cats and I'm traveling solo and I'm loving it. Yeah, good. <laughs> I'll die alone. It's fine. <laughs> Stop it. It's fine. Um, so w- you talked about like when you were a kid watching Fred Savage, you wanted to direct and, and you've talked about oh, yeah. how you want to do like sort of a dark comedy and all those kind of things. Where are you at in your life right now, both professionally, personally? What are the kind of things that occupy your mind in your day. And have you directed? On a small scale, but not in the way that I'd want to. When I was in college, I directed a lot of music videos for my friends who were like entering um, hip hop competitions, which is hysterical because I have like, I'm like the squarest of squares. (laughs) And so like, but I had friends who were musicians or like rappers in college and they would do submissions to like world star hip hop or like different contests. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I'll shoot your music video. And <laughs> you know, like that was how I kind of spent my college years just for fun doing stuff like that. And then I sort of fell into writing in the last couple of years. I did a rom-com podcast um, through the rom-com pod channel with these two girls, Becca Freeman and Rachel King, who are just awesome. And then we adapted the um, the podcast into a TV pilot. Nice. So I wrote that. And then from there, that kind of kicked off, like hoping to, you know, keep writing in that world and direct. And now I'm working um, with Hallmark, doing like a series of like murder mystery movies for them, yeah. which has been really fun. And the goal is to direct a couple of those down okay. the line. Um which is great learning too, because they move so fast. You make yeah. a movie in 15 days. Yeah. So it is like, yeah. you know, film school. Like you got to know how to do it and move it and go quickly. And, you know, kind of sometimes you have limited resources, but how like get what you need. It's been great learning. So I'm sort of shadowing now and then hopefully I'll have a real well, that's director. So awesome. Just like soap plan. operas and Disney Channel were kind of its own like machine of knowing having a formula. Hallmark is just like that, where it is a formula. They know how to iron them out. They know what they need to be. So what a great just throw you right in there and learn. And so I love that you're not only getting to act in this, but also shadow and and fulfill this other dream. And and what a safe space, I hope, but, but I'm sure it sounds like it to do that. Yeah, it's amazing. The woman who directs the movies, um, the series that I'm working on is called like the Aurora Tea Garden Mysteries. So it's like a prequel. There was an existing version before 
um, that Candace Cameron was in. And now this is like the early version. They're like, it's vintage. It's set in 2008. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You're, like, <"Shut laughs> up. You're like, Wizards was set in 2008. Like, come yeah, on. Playing it fast and loose <laughs> with the word vintage, but okay. But it's set in, you know, the early 2000s. And um, our director is this amazing woman named uh, Jessica Harmon. And she was an actress, you know, like as a kid and young adult. Yeah. And now she's an incredible director. And she's just the best. Like, it open book like everyone there like wants you to learn and ask questions and it's wonderful it's such a great group of people and i learn a ton it's like free film school so it's that's great so, that's so great now, my brother peter uh directs hallmark and lifetime movies so if you ever when he he does a lot in in vancouver i'm oh. not sure where you sure you shoot yours maybe it's there in vancouver so if yeah. you want me to uh, put you in touch with him i'm sure peter Skyler's going to call you. Uh, so yes. he, he he's, uh, you can shadow him maybe because he, um, when calls the heart is what he's directing mm. now. That show. Oh yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Absolutely. So, well, we shoot in BC, so I'll have to find Peter. That's awesome. Life has been like full circle moments. And so to me, I'm like the ultimate hearing this. I'm like the ultimate full circle moment is I would love to be directed by you at some point and just see all of that your insights would coming together. It. That would yeah. be amazing. Right. Like just full, completely <laughs> full circle. I, I could be yeah. directed by Skylar as well. Yeah. That would be magical. <laughs> that is I would so love awesome, to, David. <laughs> I love it. Well, is there anything else that you want to mention or talk about just before we let you go? Thank you so much, by the way, for coming yeah, on the podcast. We appreciate it's been so nice seeing your face and reconnecting after seventeen years. Oh my gosh, I know. It's so wild. No, I was just so happy when I saw your message, and I love that you guys are doing this. And I saw that there's maybe like a. A reboot? It's coming back? What's yeah, David the, and Selena like are doing a, a <laughs> sequel. <laughs> and and hopefully down the road, uh, uh, you know, Harper and Jerry get to jump in there as well, which would be really fun. Yeah. I think that- That's exciting. The, the, the fans are excited. So that's, you yeah. know, it's all about the fans. So we want them to be happy and, you know. Yeah, and it's David Henry's thing. So hopefully he, he, he gives the fans what they want. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much for being here. We, we were so happy to visit with you. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm a parent and I just have to say, I'm so proud of you. You're so amazing. <laughs> like all of this stuff and the Aww. things that you've achieved in your life. I'm, I'm very, very happy for you. Yeah. It, it's, Aww, it's, thank you guys. It's good to see you just glowing and happy. And, and again, you're just crazy amazing. Oh, thanks, Jen. You're my new hype woman. Thank you. <laughs> anytime. Call me anytime. Anytime, Skylar. <laughs> All right, Skylar. You take care. And everyone out there in Wizardland, goodbye.